Welcome to PhotoAlk Pro Tutorials. My name is Jeff and today I'm going to talk about double processing. Now when you want to combine the best parts of a single image, uh, say you've got this image right here on my screen where uh, the foreground is really dark but the, uh, the sky actually looks pretty good. Well, uh, instead of uh, trying to do uh, some things like uh, dodging and burning and things like that, what I can do is I can actually double process this image. And the first thing I would do, I'm going to go ahead and double click this image right here. I've already opened it up, but I'm going to come back into Camera Raw so you can see that um, in this image I've got some nice uh, nice skies. And then if I lighten it up, I take that exposure slider up, I can get some pretty decent foreground too. Uh, the way to take advantage of this is when you actually go to open your image, and I'm going to go ahead and, and set this for the foreground first, and then I'll come back and get my sky in just a moment. But what you want to do is you want to hold down the shift button, and instead of open, it'll say open as object. And that's really important because you want to make this a smart object when you open it. Uh, I've already got it opened as a smart object, so basically I'm just updating that smart object right now. All right, so here you'll see there's my updated smart object. Now what we need to do is create a duplicate version of this but with the adjustment made for the skies. Now if you just copied your smart object what would happen is if you went and adjusted that that second uh, smart object the changes would be applied to the first one too. What you have to do is break the link between the two uh, different copies and the way to do that is you can control click on the layer right here and bring up this little context menu and what you want to do is click on new smart object via copy and what that does is it gives you a second smart object of that particular uh, image but it's not tied to the first one so you can actually do separate processing to this image and I'm gonna go ahead and do that now I'm just gonna double click on the smart object thumbnail and it's gonna bring me back into camera raw and then what I can do is I can actually readjust for my skies and I'm not gonna go crazy on them uh, let me take it down pretty close to actually what was the normal, maybe just a little bit brighter. And uh, you can go ahead and play with some of the different things here, play with your black, uh, you know, bring your, your recovery over if you need to and fix that a little bit. Um, maybe give it a little bit more clarity because that kind of does a nice job on the edges of the clouds. Uh, I'm going to come in here real quick and uh, go to my tones here and bring up my lights just a little bit and then take my darks down. Just give it a nice, there we go, that's a nice little snappy sky. Once I hit OK, it's going to come back to Photoshop and it's going to update that particular smart object. And this is where it really kind of comes together because that ability to go back into Camera Raw using the smart object is really what makes this really great. Instead of having to, to open an image, process it, save it, close it, open it again, process it and save it as a, diff as a, a different file name and then combine it too, you can go through all those steps, but why bother when you can actually open your images as smart objects? All right, so now you can see I've got my smart object here on top with the darker skies, and I have my, my lighter foreground at the bottom. All right, the next step is that you're going to grab your lasso tool, and uh, this works really well. I'm just going to make a, a real quick lasso around the sky area. Now you can see the trees here. I'm just making a rough outline, and I've actually done this um, already, and I'm going to come and use the one I've done. But just to show you real quickly, just make a rough outline. Don't worry about the trees. Just kind of get close as you can to the edge and then trace all the way back around the outside of the sky here until it meets up and let go and there's a selection. All right, now I'm going to get rid of that one and go to the one I've already done here. Uh, I saved one as a, uh, a channel here, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, command click on that to select it and then go back to my layer. Um, all right, so here I've got this selection. You can see it's a rough selection here. Um, I'll go in here and show you. It's it's. Uh, it's not bad. It, it's it's a little rough around the edges, but I wanted to save the, the monument down here. That's why I made a little bit different selection. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our uh, select menu up here. We're going to click select, and then we're going to come down here and click on color range. Now you want to have, let me bring this dialog box over so you can actually see it. There we go. You want to have this black mat selected here, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to hold down the shift button, and we're going to start clicking in our sky. And you don't want to click on all the black elements in your sky. Now, don't click on any tree areas down here because that's going to defeat our purpose. But what we want to do is clear up all these little black elements in the sky and make sure that, as you see over here, there's a couple areas I missed. You can actually click on the box in here to get those, or you can just click in the sky. Once we have them all done, we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now, that's going to give us a much better selection of our trees. And I missed a couple of places, but you know I'm going to let it go for this tutorial. All right. 
now that we've got that selection, I'm just going to come down here. I'm going to click on this mask button right down here. And um, the mask is really nice. You can see right down here, you just click on Add Layer Mask, and that will uh, quickly mask out that lower section. Now you can see it's done a pretty nice job. Now what you'll notice right away is that you're going to get some ugly little um, halos and some nasty areas right here. And this is a little trick. I actually saw this in uh, popular photography and uh, it works very well. What you want to do is while your mask is still selected, you can see the little bracket outline around that mask uh, icon right there, is go up to filter and then go down to your blur and then just go to bl Gaussian blur and what you're going to do is you're just going to blur that mat just a little bit and that will start to clear up now if you go too far what happens is you really start picking up some halos and you can see in this area right down here it's really starting to halo a lot but if you keep it fairly low I'm going to keep this right around 2.2 or so um, it actually does a pretty nice job of cleaning up all those nasty little areas click OK and I'm going to zoom back out here now, actually, I could have gone in and done it a little bit more, um, but I can also go back in with my brush and now clean up this mat over here if I want to. And I can just go down here, and since I want to uh, paint with white and add that in, I'm going to make sure my white is selected here. So I'm going to hit X to go to a foreground color. I'm going to get my brush, and then I want to make this uh, a very soft brush um, so it blends nicely. All right, that ought to work and then maybe take my diameter up and just gonna hit the right bracket key and get that up to a nice big fuzzy brush there and as you can see I can kinda of put some of this back in and it will clean up those edges really nicely um, I'm not gonna do the whole thing because that would take quite a while and we just don't have that much time but anyway as you can see that's just a nice way of doing a little combining a little double processing um, now the nice thing is you can't dodge and burn directly on a smart object but what you can do is hold down the command alt shift and then hit E and that kind of flattens it and puts another layer on top now you're free to dodge and burn on this layer right here and you know there's a lot of different things that I might do to here I might tone this uh, lake down or I might do the old uh, you know mirror water trick uh, there's a couple of different things I'm gonna do on this image and actually you know what I'm gonna post one on my website uh, to go with this tutorial so you can see what my little finished image looked like but that's how I got there was through this double process so go ahead use your smart objects and give it a try I'm Jeff at photowalkpro.com